Researchers have known for decades that if you cool liquid helium just a few degrees below its boiling point of minus 452 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 269 degrees Celsius, it will suddenly be able to do things that other fluids can't, like dribble through molecule-thin cracks, climb up and over the sides of a dish, and remain motionless when its container is spun. No longer a mere liquid, the helium has become a superfluid, a liquid that flows without friction. If you set, down, a cup with a liquid circulating around and you come back 10 minutes later, of course it stopped moving, says John Beamish, an experimental physicist at the University of Alberta in Edmonton. Atoms in the liquid will collide with one another and slow down. But if you did that with helium at low temperature and came back a million years later, he says, it would still be moving. Like plenty of other physics experiments that make you go, huh? Superfluidity flows from the counterintuitive rules of quantum mechanics. But unlike other quantum stuff, superfluid helium's weird behavior is visible to the naked eye. It wasn't until 1938 that the Russian physicist Pyotr Kopyitsa and, independently, the British duo of John Allen and Don Missiner measured the flow rate of helium below that temperature through a pair of glass discs attached to a plunger and a long, thin glass tube, respectively. The viscosity was so low that Kopyitsa, who won his own Nobel Prize for the work, coined the term superfluid to describe it, after superconductor, the term for a material that conducts very high electric currents without resistance. Helium's liquidity at low temperatures allows it to carry out a transformation called Bose Einstein condensation, in which individual particles overlap until they behave like one big particle. Atoms acting in unison don't behave like individual atoms. If you march in unison, you don't collide with each other, says Moses Chan, who studies superfluidity at Pennsylvania State University in University Park. Researchers like to think of superfluid helium as a mixture of two fluids, one normal and one superfluid. The trick now is to see if the supersolid can produce the equivalent of super leaks or other well known super effects. If other unique properties can be convincingly shown, Beamish says, everyone would agree it's a new phase of matter.